In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made a fireplace mantle with no visible end grain on the edges. This is a little more advanced, but 100% worth the extra effort for the seamless result. I am Jacob from Martin's Woodworking, and let's get to this build. So obviously, figuring out your dimensions for your mantle will be specific to your space. This one is 64 inches long, 9 inches deep, and 5.5 and inches tall. I began by labeling all my pieces and matching up grain patterns for the top and bottom panel that will need glued up. At this point, I have the boards longer than my final length, as this will allow me to cut 45 degree miter cuts later without worrying about cutting too much off. I marked out my location for dowels on my top and bottom panel pieces and began the glue up. Dowels aren't necessary for this, they just help me keep everything square and lined up, acting as a second set of hands during a glue up to make sure things don't slide around and get all out of whack. With the glue up done, I could turn my attention to the 45 degree cuts that need to be made. So this is where you can make the project more advanced or keep it simple. You could just do a classic butt joint to make the box for the mantle, but that would leave exposed end grains somewhere in the project, either the front, sides, and or the top and bottom. With doing the 45 degree cuts, there will be no end grain and the grain will look continuous around the mantle. Take your time marking out the correct angles for the 45 degree cuts. You want to make sure the show face is still the show face of the project when you are done cutting. I used a combination of a table saw and a miter saw to achieve these cuts. When cutting the angles on the edge of the board or lengthwise, my advice to you is to make the first cut on the end taking off as little as possible. Then the second cut on the opposite end just sneak up on the cut. This is why we left the boards long originally, so we can sneak up on the cut for the perfect fit. This is a little trick with blue tape on the miter saw to get the correct cut. I put tape over where the blade cuts and with the saw tilted to 45 degrees, then I cut into the tape. This will show me exactly where the saw will cut through the wood, making it easier to get the perfect cut. With all the pieces cut to size and the angles cut in the correct spot, it's time for the glue up. I suggest using blue tape to do the majority of the clamping for you. A few actual clamps will be good to have, but as you will see, I mainly use tape to hold this together. And if you don't think tape will hold this, click the card above to see how I did this same glue up process in a different project. I put tape across the seams on the show face of the wood. This will allow everything to fold together, bringing both 45 degree angles together and creating a 90 degree angle to form the rectangular shape of the mantle. I did cut some spacers to put in the middle to keep things square and supported during the glue up. And an extra set of hands was nice for making this glue up a success. After the glue dried, I removed the tape and now you can see how seamless it looks because of using the 45 degree angles to make the box. And because I'm not perfect, I had to use some wood putty to fill a few cracks along the seams. But because I am staining this, it will be unnoticeable when it's all said and done. To attach the mantle to the wall, I am pre-drilling and countersinking holes for some screws. This particular mantle is replacing an old one. The mantle sits up on brake bump outs on the fireplace wall and screws into this board that is attached to the bricks. I will put screws in the bottom side up into the piece of wood that is attached to the wall. And as you can see, I am cutting this timeline close. It's already December and I need to have this done for the holiday season. I did get it done in time though. The next step is to install the spacers that I used for the glue up, permanently though this time. I attached these with just a few brad nails. This will give the project some strength and rigidity I used three spacers, making sure to space them out evenly. I did a quick sanding up to 220 grit, making sure to keep my corners nice and sharp looking. Before I started staining, I cleaned off the project with mineral spirits, and when that was dry, I stained the mantle a dark gray-brown color to match the stair railing that I installed. Click the card up above if you're interested in that. And with the two coats of stain applied and dried, I brushed on three coats of water-based poly and then installed the mantle. I am pretty happy with how this quick mantle build turned out, and I got it done in time for the holiday season. Let me know what you think of doing the 45 degree miter cuts. Was it a better idea than the classic butt joints? I think it gives it a cleaner seamless look and makes the corners look really sharp. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out some of my other DIY videos. And if I earned it, it would mean a lot to me if you helped me reach my goal of 5,000 subscribers in 2023. And with that, I'll leave a few beauty shots of the finished product and link a few videos. Hope to see you on the next build and thank you for watching.